We are here with Tom Hufford, one of Sabre's original 16 founding members back in 1971. Tom, I wanted to ask you how you came about to join Sabre. Uh, I was a college student at the time at Virginia Tech and grew up in Southwest Virginia. I had gotten a copy of the Macmillan Encyclopedia in 69 when it came out and went through and made a list of all the players born in Virginia that they had information for. And I noticed there were uh, a number that uh, probably weren't still with us since they played in the 1800s, uh, but there were no death information for some of those. So I thought, you know, I need to to hunt up and find out whatever happened to these guys. And I did track a number of the players down, find their families, etc. But once I got the information, I really didn't know what to do with it. And uh, I ended up writing to the Hall of Fame and said, I have some additions to the baseball encyclopedia and what should I do with it? And Cliff Cackline wrote back and Cliff and I corresponded for a couple of years and he put me in touch with other people around that were doing the same type of work that I was interested in. Bob Davids had the idea of a group like Sabre because he had been writing freelance articles over the years and submitted to sporting news and uh, local newspapers around um, baseball history and those outlets were starting to dry up and weren't using that type of work and Bob thought, well, we need some some way to, to put like-minded people together and maybe once a year we could publish our own work. So he and Cliff Kaplan put their heads together, came up with a list of people that they thought might be interested and Bob sent a letter out in March of 71. I received one of those and was very excited, not from the standpoint of putting a, a research group together, but the thought of going to Cooperstown, because I'd never been. I was 21, and I called Bob. Uh, I'd never met Bob. I'd read his articles in supporting this. Bob said, if you can get to Washington, D.C., you can ride up there with us. So and I checked the Greyhound schedule, and sure enough, I could get there. And I guess you'd say the rest is history. I, I went up. Uh, I was in awe of everyone that was there. I, I wasn't the, the youngest person. We had another member, Dan Ginsburg, who was 16, I think, at the time. Uh, you know, we had an eventful day at the Hall of Fame Library. Uh, I probably didn't contribute much at all. Uh, I was so in awe of the knowledge that this group had. I thought they were all, all old men, and looking back, I'm older now than most of those guys were now. Uh, but it's been 40 years, and it's been, been terrific. Uh, you know, Sabre's been a big part of my life. I, I tell my wife, uh, Jim, I was married to Sabre for 10 years before I was married to you. And uh, I, I guess that, that summarizes it. I can tell a lot more stories. But that, that's the basis of how we got started. Did you think you would be around to see Sabre's 40th birthday? I never, never gave any thought whatsoever to that. I, I didn't know if, you know, we didn't, we didn't think how long will this group be around, but I do remember at the first meeting when we got together, someone said, wonder how many people are out there like us that might be interested in a group like this. And, and of course, I didn't know anyone. Uh, but Bob, you know, had a, a small group of people that he corresponded with. Cliff Cackline was most knowledgeable because he was at the Hall of Fame and he fielded the mail and the letters that came in and he had people he was corresponding with but the general consensus around the table was if we start this group maybe eventually we can end up with 50 members and once we had the meeting and a couple of weeks later the sporting news ran a, a small article saying this group had been started 
dues are ten dollars a year here's an address you can send to we had over 100 members within two months or so and as they say the rest is history over the last 40 years what are you most proud of either personally or, or for the organization what I'm most proud of personally is you know the friendships I've made and the relationships that have formed through this organization. The, I guess what the organization has accomplished in terms of preserving information, finding information that frankly, if, if we hadn't done this, no one else would. Uh, there wouldn't be an organization that is concerned with whatever happened to former players, especially you know players from over 100 years ago. Uh, what is their full name? When and where did they die or, and, and born? That type of information. The organized baseball certainly, you know, and this is not a criticism, but it's a business and they get the players to do the best they can on the field. And after the players are gone. A lot of times have no uh, contact with them you know, ever again. Uh, being able to put the information together when someone calls and says, "I think my grandfather played baseball. Can you ever? Uh, can you help me with that?" The, a couple of instances, and you know, Saber has the reputation as a statistical organization, that, I've always thought that's, that's fine, the numbers kind of will take care of themselves. Um, it's the hard digging into whatever happened to this, who did this, whatever, that I'm most proud of. Uh, I have several instances since my interest was biographical research where I have tried to track down a long lost player and ran into families that I've contacted that would finally say we don't we don't know what happened to grandfather, we don't know what happened to my dad. Uh, he ended up estranged from the family or for various reasons we lost touch. And there have been a couple quest or a couple of situations where I was able to you know, do, do my own detective work and find out what had happened to their ancestor and had the, you know, bittersweet uh, responsibility, I guess, of calling and saying, I, I found out when and where your dad died. And one family uh, about 15 years ago was a family of an umpire who had uh, become estranged and had had died and the family hadn't heard from him in 30 years. And I told them when he died, where he was buried, and, and the family took a trip and went to go visit uh, the grave and, you know, came back and was very touched. That's the kind of thing that you know, I get satisfaction from. All right, Tom, thank you for your time. Sure.